In this episode, we're going to take a look at an action figure that I've wanted ever since I was a kid. Unfortunately, it's not the original, but it's its 2023 counterpart that I think will be leaps and bounds better than the original. So, stick around. and welcome to It Came From My Side of the Laundry Room. My name is Rob and in this episode we will be taking a look at an action figure of one of my favorite cinematic heroes that coincidentally got its own toy line in the 80s that I was never able to get any of the figures of. And when I was able to, they didn't have the man himself. So I am excited that I have gotten an Indiana Jones action figure. Now this is Hasbro made in their six inch scale. Nowhere near the three and three quarter original Kenner ones. So I'm thinking that alone is gonna make this awesome. But to be completely fair, I also have the three and three quarter reproduction that Hasbro made coming my way through Amazon. So once I get that one, we'll take a look at that as well. Now, I don't know if you remember, about a year and a half ago, give or take, I got an Indiana Jones action figure from Disney World at Hollywood Studios, where the Indiana Jones experience is. Now, that figure was from Temple of Doom, and I'm pretty sure I had rose-colored glasses on because for as awesome as I thought that figure was, as time went on, it really lost its luster with me because it's not that great of a figure and I'm glad I didn't spend a lot of money on it. Even it being at Disney World, it was pretty reasonably priced. Now, that figure that that was, was what I'm thinking this will be. So I'm pretty excited to dive in and take a look at it. Now, if you notice in the background, it's kind of messy. I'm in the spring cleaning mode here at my side of the laundry room. Hence why last week's episodes were all toy reviews and this week's episodes will be all toy reviews as well because I've just been taking my time, taking down every toy, dusting it off, dusting the shelves, reorganizing, reposing, all that fun stuff. It's been a lot of fun, but very time consuming especially when you don't have a lot of time to begin with. So, without further ado, let's start by taking a look at the packaging. Okay, here we go. Indiana Jones Adventure Series. This is Indiana Jones from Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I really like this packaging. I mean, of course you have the iconic font of Indiana Jones. You have very minimal artwork of Indy there on the side. And you have like a desert landscape in the background, which gives way to a map, which is very on brand for Indiana Jones. So it has a built-in artifact, which I have to say, I was totally ignorant to that fact. And it's pretty cool. Now, here we have the side artwork where they tout that it's plastic-free packaging, which... They have just said they are doing away with that already. So I'm kind of disappointed in that because I really dig these packages. Unfortunately, I don't save them. I mean, I take the figure out and pitch them, but I like all the awesome artwork that's on them. Anyway, as I was saying, awesome artwork. This side panel has some great artwork. We have Indy. We have Indy with the idol at the beginning of the movie. And you have Indy jumping from the horse onto the uh, Nazi truck. Now we have the back of the package, which shows you everything that's included, which we will take a closer look at shortly. And we have the build and artifact of the actual Ark of the Covenant, which is pretty awesome. And now this side package, art is of the figures that are released in this line and what parts of the arc that they have. Now, to be completely honest, 
This isn't a line that I want to complete. I'm very happy just to have Indy. Maybe Marion one day, but eh, I'm not really into it for all the different characters. Now, Temple of Doom might be a little bit different, so we'll have to see. I know they have a short round figure coming out, and that looks pretty awesome because it looks like it comes with soft goods, and I am a sucker for soft goods. Anyway, let's get the figure out and take a look at him and his accessories. Okay, here we have Indy and all of his accessories. And I even included the awesome uh, tissue paper that uh, Indy came with and his accessories came in another. See, these are the little neat nuances that we are going to lose when they go back to windowed packaging again. I really like these little, you know, bits of detail that were added to like the you know, G.I. Joe classified line and the indie line. Anyway, what we have here is four different hands, two left, two right in various poses. We have a wound up whip that he can wear on his side, and we have a action whip. Now, this is how it came out of the packaging, and I hope it's easy to mold into... Uh, you know, a better shape, but I wanted to show you how it came out of the package. I mean, as you can see here, I mean, hopefully we get some good playability out of that. And it also comes with uh, one of his revolvers. Now it came with two idols that go on top of the Ark and the idol from the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark. So uh, let's take a look at the character a little bit more in detail here. I mean, one of the complaints I heard was the hat. And you can definitely see it's got a little bit of a wowie here. That hopefully it, I can relax a little bit. But the face sculpt looks really good. I mean, he doesn't scream, I'm ready for action. He just looks like, I'm really tired of this crap, which kind of fits. His molded leather coat here, I mean, they even went so far as to put the zipper teeth down it. It has wear and tear on it, which is really great. He has a holster for the revolver. This is where the whip goes on. And I don't mind it, but it does worry me because you know how easy things like this can break over time. He has one of his satchels that unfortunately you probably can't get off because it's under his jacket, which is how he wore it. But it would have been pretty cool if it was removable. has some nice detailing. Now, one of the things right out of the uh, giddy-up that, you know, his ankle joints were very stiff. And I was worried at first that because of the molding of the pants, they weren't going to be posable. But they are. I mean, some of this, you know, texture detailing and the, you know, wrinkles and everything. More wear and tear there. Look really cool, but... It kind of, you know, leaves some weird seams here at the joints. I mean, all the little details look pretty nice. You can see he has a gun hand ready for action. And a hand ready to... Uh, throw me the whip. I give you the idol, throw me the whip. So let's put them in a couple of poses and see how much fun we can have with this figure. Okay, first pose. I have repurposed the background scenery that came with the uh, figure I got from Disney World. Now, uh, okay, I got a couple gripes right off the top. First off, his hat isn't removable, so that kind of bugs me. Not a big deal. Not a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination, but that just kind of sucks. 
Second gripe. The pistol that he comes with is very tiny in his hands, and it's made from a very, very soft plastic. So it is very, uh, yeah, it goes in his hands easy enough because it's the soft plastic, but it just doesn't, needs to be a little bit bigger, have a little bit more heft to it, in my opinion. Now, his open hand holding the idol, that worked perfectly. Now, the biggest gripe that I have is the little leather strap that the whip is supposed to hold on to. Before I even posed him in this, I tried to put the whip on, and the little post and hole apparatus that it has does not hold worth a damn. It kept popping right out, and yes, I mean, just from dumb luck and gravity, the whip will sit on the little loop, but it's not the same as having it closed. So I don't know if there's something I can do to remedy that down the road, but just, yeah, major disappointment. Now, I am going to get the revolver that the Disney World figure came with to see how that looks in his hands to see if that's any better. But yeah, I really like this pose. I like the background. It it works. So really happy about that. So let's get to our next pose and try out some of the other hands. Okay, pose number two. I wanted to give him the whip. Hold on a second. There's a little spot on his hat here. There we go. Wanted to pose him with the whip. And yep, my fears about its moldability definitely came true. I tried to straighten it out for a good while. And that's the best I could get. So that's kind of a bummer. But I... Uh, Put a dude here in the foreground like he's getting ready to whip him to uh, get out of this temple. But his, you know, leg posability and footwork are pretty good. I mean, he's standing very well on his own with a little bit of, you know, posing in the legs. I switched out both hands. Uh, yeah, they seem very pliable so they went on and off pretty easy so I was happy about that so it seems like for every you know step forward there's a step back but so far I mean it's not a bad figure um let's do one final pose and by the way the dude in the foreground if you couldn't tell was the uh, Disney World indie figure that I got because I wanted to get him out and look at the gear that he has, and maybe for the next pose, I'll put those on him to see the differences. So, let's get to the next pose. Okay, here is the third and final pose, and I went with a very simplistic pose of him just standing there brandishing his weaponry. And I gave him the whip and the revolver that came with the Indiana Jones figure that I got from Disney World. Now, yes, the whip seems a little bit more exaggerated because of its length, because that figure is 7 inch in scale. So let me put it here next to that one that you can see. And you can just see leaps and bounds that the Hasbro one is much better. And, yeah, raise this up a little bit. And, yes, he has a removable hat. And you can kind of see how silly it looks. But I think Hasbro would have done a better job and maybe not looked as silly. Anyway, let's get him out of here. He doesn't need any more screen time. But the whip has the same moldability issues, but I really like, and this goes for the gun too, the sturdiness and the heft of the accessory. I really like that aspect of it. So I might swap out their gear and the pistol looks a little bit bigger, you know, kind of has a 357 type appearance to the scale, but 
like I said, it just has that heft and eye-catching aspect of it that I enjoy. And it does not fit in the holster, unfortunately. And the holster has the same hole and peg situation that the whip harness has. Um, albeit it handled it a little bit better because they oversized the flap of the holster. And I feel like the strap used for the whip would be so much better if it was a little bit longer. I mean, because the resistance of the uh, thickness of the coiled up whip is, you know, making it pop out every time I try to do it. So yeah, that's just a huge bummer, but I'll work my way around it. But I do enjoy these accessories with this figure a little bit more. So we'll see how I pose him up on the shelf there. Look at his face a little bit better there. And I mean, for the gripes that I have, I'm happy with it. I mean, there's other figures coming out. I know they're doing a three different Indiana Jones in the next wave. They're doing a Temple of Doom indie with the ripped sleeve, like the uh, Disney World one I just had up. They are doing a brainwashed um, version without the shirt on and the uh, like dust on his face and everything. And they are also doing a um, Dial of Destiny version, which looks pretty good. I like the outfit that he has on. So that might be something I pick up as well, but I definitely want to get the Temple of Doom one. Uh, yeah, it's a hot button topic, but that is definitely my favorite Indiana Jones movie out of all of them. But that's probably just the age I was at when I saw it in the theaters that it just hit me in that way. But anyway, like I said, other than a few little gripes, some major in my book. I'm still happy with this figure and I'm happy that I got it. And yeah, I'll display it on the shelf proudly. So anyway, let's head back to me to wrap this up. 20 minutes later. Okay, finally back to me. Now, that took a lot longer than I anticipated because I was messing around with that stupid belt loop to try to get his whip to stick to get the little little peg in the hole i tried different types of like gum and wax things that i use to you know fix toys and to help them stay standing some of them that have funky legs and that stuff is strong enough to hold a figure in place on its feet and you can easily just take it off afterwards. And like I said, it's strong enough to keep a figure upright. But it wasn't strong enough to keep that stupid little post into the hole. I don't know. That is the biggest bummer about this action figure. Not enough to damper my excitement over owning it. But just a definite strike against it. Now, I have him posed with the other accessories that I showed in that last pose. And he's up on the shelf. I don't know if that'll be his permanent home up there, but he looks pretty good. You know, I have the whip kind of uh, zigzagging around his legs like it's just resting in his hand and looped around. So it looks pretty cool. And all in all, like I said... I'm still happy that I have purchased it and have it, but yeah, Hasbro, do better next time on that aspect. And I think all it needed was just like the smallest millimeter length added to it, but that's not even true because I tried to loop it without the whip and it still wouldn't hold. So I don't know if it's something that I can play with longer and get it to, you know, want to work, but definitely don't have the time right now. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Indiana Jones action figure from Raiders of the Lost Ark. 
I think it's a great figure, but yeah, just that one strike against it is enough to kind of piss me off. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them, and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this, or any of the episodes that YouTube is recommending down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you will be notified whenever there's a new episode. So anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Keep being rad, and stay dorky!